you remember when I said in an episode the other day they're only tracking the parts of your life that matter? Well, I have to apologize because I might in fact have been wrong. And the reason why I say this is because I'm not trying to instill fear or fear monger. But when you learn about things that are being done currently that haven't necessarily gone mainstream, but you know that over the next 5, 10 years will go mainstream, whether we know it or not, in a public sense, you have to admit when you're wrong and so I think that when it comes down to different institutions wanting to control certain parts of our lives they're controlling all of it so let's get into it so first off think about slowing down time the ability to slow down time or speed it up but in this case slow it down now what if I told you there was something that you would be infused with sort of like how they inject people in the movies when they capture people they inject them with a tracker chip except something far more lethal than that something that i think people would actually prefer to be killed instantly instead of suffer through this and what i'm talking about is a skin infused bug or virus that essentially attaches itself to the receptors and the neurons of the brain and through a certain process within a matter of seconds can make you feel like the time that is going by right now is 5,000 times longer than it really is and you might say okay Dave that's a bit much and I say no 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 let me break this down for you there's a chip that they've pretty much made and I think they've had for a while that allows them to slow down time particularly for prisoners for people that they that the government feels have been that that their sentence is not is not good enough they've done such horrific things that their sentence is not good enough now these people and the reason why we haven't heard much about them is because supposedly and I say this very carefully Because I may in fact be disproven in the future, so I don't want to say this for 100% certainty or fact, but there's enough evidence to substantiate the fact that there are, whether or not you want to speculate about how out there it goes, there are prisons, believe it or not, in Antarctica that are run by a handful of major countries, Russia being one of them, China being another one of them, the US of course another one, Israel, and a few other countries as well. Now... What's interesting about this is that this is where prisoners get sent to when we're talking blacklist, black book, off the record. You're, the, the law doesn't mean crap to you. You're not getting out ever again because we can't afford to have you out. You're far too lethal. You're far too dangerous. You may, in fact, be a little bit too intelligent for some of the people within our government. And so they send these prisoners there. They send these people there. And... A good example of that, believe it or not, it would probably be the film Escape Plan with Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger because even though the film is fictional, the concept itself is in fact actually pretty legitimate. As a matter of fact, I would even dare to say that there are more extremities than what has been shown in that film. And so this chip can literally make you feel like you are sitting and staying alive in a jail cell for, I'm not joking, literally thousands of years. Now, scientifically on the back end, how this works, I can't say for sure. I'm not a scientist as I've claimed many times and I don't claim to be even close to having any type of scientific knowledge. With that being said, before I dive into the specifics, what I want to tell you quickly is that when this chip was first made, it was able to be controlled remotely by a computer obviously using electromagnetic frequencies to transmit how much longer or shorter the people controlling this chip wanted to make the target or the victim f- um, live for I guess you could say so even though they're living a regular life like you and I they're not literally living longer or shorter than anybody else they feel like they are Because that's how powerful the mind is. And if you can manipulate the mind, 
you can manipulate the body and you can ma manipulate the soul and you can manipulate the person. And so in the beginning, it was able to be remotely controlled from a computer. But now they've implemented, particularly the Pentagon has implemented the use of brain waves. So they are able to telepathically control and dictate how long they want a certain prisoner to be in jail for, so to speak. And so let me give you a quick example. Pretend you're someone at the Pentagon who's in charge of overseeing three or four prisoners within the Antarctic base, right? What happens then is that through your mind, you can wake up one morning. Again, you would need authorization and all that, but I'm just kind of summing it up for you. You would be able to wake up in the morning and with the control of your own mind, through maybe the use of a helmet, let's say, if that, could say to yourself, you know what? This guy feels like he's in prison right now for a thousand years. He said something to me the other day from his prison cell I didn't like. Screw him. I'm going to up it to 2,000 years. And through the use of putting on a helmet, or maybe not even, just thinking about it, going through a procedure of, I guess you could say, installments within the mind you can you have now extended that person's feeling of how long they're there for even though in reality they're living a regular life or sorry they're yeah they're existing in a regular timeline in this timeline just like everybody else that is insane now the reason why this is so believable is because of the fact that there are things that have been confirmed publicly by the Pentagon, such as things like the ability to have bees, microscopic bees, or different animals project voices to confuse you and to confuse your mind and to mess with your mind. This is nothing new. The concept of utilizing EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, and brain waves is nothing new. Now, let me jump into the public side of it, because what I just spoke about is research and knowledge I've been able to accumulate and piece together. But there are some actual articles that talk about this on the front end. And when you know that it's coming out on the front end, that is how you truly know that ultimately this is going to happen. If not, it's already been happening. So according to dailymail.co.uk, this is the scenario, and I quote, being explored by researchers at Oxford University. They claim life extension technology can mean prisoners serve longer sentences. Philosopher Dr. Rebecca Roche also writes in her blog that a time distortion pill can make people feel like they were in prison longer. Another scenario the group looked at was uploading minds to a digital realm. And I think the best example of explaining that would probably be the Netflix film or Netflix show Altered Carbon. There are certain instances within that show where you can upload your mind. There are certain hubs all across the city within this show where, and it takes place in the future, where you can upload your mind to a virtual or digital, I guess you could say, constructed reality. Not a real one, a constructed one, but it's digital. Therefore, time can go as slow or as fast as you like. You can do whatever you want in there. You control and dictate what you want to what you want to do, and in the show it's interesting because it talk it shows that this is also used as a form of torture for the police. And I think another quick example, uh, a bit of a different one, more of a, a dream state example, would probably be Inception. But anyways, you, you I hope you get the point. So sentence and I quote according to DailyMail.co.uk. They say billionaires are being, inv are being invested in techniques that can mean the cruelest criminals will be kept alive indefinitely in conditions befitting their crime. According to their research, prison firms could also develop drugs that make time pass slowly, making an inmate sentence feel like an eternity. And I quote, some crimes are so bad they require a really long period of punishment, and a lot of people seem to get out of that punishment by dying, Dr. Roche told Ross Anderson in Aeon magazine. Dr. Roche highlights what she describes as the laughably inadequate sentence of 30 years in prison for people who have done horrendous crimes, like, for example, very sadly, um, murdering their own children or raping children or anything of that sort. Everything that, that's just completely disgusting. This is what this type of 
torture is made for. The most extreme people, the mass murderers, the rapists, the, the child molesters, those types of people, the, the, the sycophants, the, the, the very deprived people. And I want to say one thing very quickly here. They believe that this technology had come from the ability that somewhere within our human DNA, we have actually been able to utilize our own DNA and prove at one point in time, we don't know when, I don't think it was any time recently, but prove that at one point in time, humans were actually living for thousands of years. Now, this is what their studies have suggested. This is what their science suggests. They're not really looking into how long humans have lived for whether it was they live for thousands of years and all that, they're just looking for the tools they need to make this type of chip or this type of pill possible. Now, of course, on the public end, what you're going to do is you're going to say, no, don't worry, it's a pill and this and that. You got We have to force it down your mouth. You have to take it, da, da, da. But even then, that doesn't sound as bad as being injected or having some type of infusion put into you that you, don't, you might not even know where in your body it is. You might not even be able to get it out. And so I think that's ultimately something that, is a form of biological human engineering that needs to be controlled very carefully because if these chips or are implanted into the public, we would never know. This could be something that could be put into our food, put into our water. We're at a point now where you can't even see the most microscopic computer chip in the world. And so to say that it's not possible to make something small enough to do this to you would be preposterous. Now, I guess it would be a good thing if you're not in prison and you you had it by accident or something like that because you you'd be living for say you know 80 90 years regular span of a human being but you'd feel like you lived for a thousand or two thousand so I mean I guess but again it all comes down to the way in which it affects the mind the way in which the perception works and because I'm not entirely sure I'm not trying to play this off as a good thing believe me so with that being said what I also want to talk about as well is that it is something to do with brain waves. Now, the reason why I bring up brain waves and the reason why I've been bringing it up more so lately than before is because of the fact that brain waves have the ability to control objects and minds without any quantifiable measure. And there's no limit. And what I mean by that is this, the Pentagon and DARPA have discovered and I don't know, they've probably had this for a long time, that they can use brain waves to fly planes remotely. They don't even need to be in the plane. Soldiers can fly planes without even being, I guess, anywhere close to it. In fact, you may even be able to be on another planet. You could probably be on the moon and use your brain waves to control a plane. Now, again, in terms of distance, I'm not sure how that would work. But ultimately, we can't rule it out because... I don't think there would be much of a purpose or interest for the Pentagon if you were only a handful of feet away or a handful of kilometers away. The idea is to get the, the actual human soldier out of the battlefield and let the tech do the rest. Okay, now the reason why I bring this up is because, and just bear with me here, for those of you who don't know, there's something called MICs or MICs. Now. That stands for Machine Identification Code, like I said, MIC. What this does is it puts a small infringed signature on every single piece of paper on the planet. And it's also being put, has already been put in major printers. And they don't tell you this. This is not even in like the, the fine print. If you were to look at the fine print after you purchase a printer, we're talking about regular parchment paper or any type of paper that you can print with so whether you're typing an essay for school or whether you're doing something else or whether you're just printing a web page for example or you took a screenshot of, a, of something on the internet and you printed it out there's always an, a unique signature and the reason for this is so that law enforcement can track it but my research has come to found that there's an even bigger reason for this and the reason why I bring this up you might say okay Dave what is skin infused um, torture viruses have to do with brain waves and paper and, and machine identification codes well the thing the connection here is that they actually utilized machine identification codes as the foundation for what they would lay as i guess you could call the the brickwork or the the, the core 
of this project and this operation Brainiac. And I believe as far as they've come, they've only scratched the surface. And that's a little bit scary to say. But they utilized the same digital watermarks and they worked from there. So they then said, okay, instead of putting it on paper, can we apply it to a chip? And then it became, okay, can we now infuse the chip into the skin? Of course you can. It's not that difficult, right? And then the next thing, the next step was, can we infuse a chip that has this ability? And that's a different part of the project. But then when you bring the two together, you realize there's a massive connection here. So essentially, what I'm trying to get at when you look at all of it is this. You bring the, the, the tracking signatures together. You bring the brainwave uh, controlling together. And you bring the biggest part or the biggest topic of this episode, which is slowing down time or the perception of slowing down time. You bring all those together and what do you realize? Brainwaves can control all of this from virtually any remote location without even knowing it. Now, let's just say they haven't been able to complete or be successful in utilizing brainwaves to control all three of these things and put it into one. Then they're just going to do it from a computer, right? It doesn't make much of a difference. And so ultimately, there's nothing we can really do about this. We just have to essentially, I mean, I'm being brutally honest with you guys, we have to hope that this does not fall into the wrong hands or is not used for the wrong reasons. Biotechnology is real. And I think I've done maybe five or six. I, I've done a bunch of episodes on it. But I don't think I've done an episode that describes something so torturous and so lethal. I would dare to say people would probably, and I, prisoners rather, if you had to give them the option of being tortured like this in the way I just described or being shot, and dying almost instantly, I guarantee you they would take being shot over this. For sure. Without a question of a doubt. Now, of course, I don't mean that literally, I said metaphorically, but you get what I'm saying. And so, again, this applies for people, I guess you could say for the death penalty or something like that. But this would also be a great mechanism or great tool if we look at it from a purely idealistic and opportunistic standpoint, would be a great tool for keeping the real bad ones in jail. So, Look, from a human perspective and a reasonable perspective, when we take all of the mystery out of it, I can fully understand why this technology is being done and why it's being used and why it's being made or why it's already been used. Because, excuse me, the worst of the worst, I think most people can agree, most sane people in a society can agree, should be kept in jail, should be kept in prison. And if they escape that prison, they should be in such a re remote and isolated location. They wouldn't be able to get back to any type of civilized society. And so when you take all of this and you realize that as long as it's used for a positive purpose, then we as a people may still argue against it from an ethical and philosophical standpoint. I, can, I would envision or I would hope that a decent amount of the population would be okay with it. Now, I'm not trying to encourage that this be done. I'm just saying that if it's imminent, if we can't stop it, we have to accept the reality. So it's kind of like taking the lesser of two evils. So let me know what you guys think because it's probably the most significant brainwave Pentagon episode I've done yet. And... We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.